Hello, this is 8th video on my channel. Let's discuss another interesting problem. Given a tree of nodes, traverse the tree from node 1 to n. The path must go through the nodes listed in visit nodes array in any order. That is, the path should start at 1, should end at 10, and should visit a node any number of times, and it must include each of the nodes in visit nodes at least once. Return the length of shortage of these paths. So the question is asking us to find the shortest path from 1 to reach n and by traversing all the nodes in the given visit nodes array. Let's assume the visit nodes are grid nodes. So the question is we have to find the shortest path from 1 to n by visiting all the grid nodes at least once. So for example, initially the tree is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have to find the shortest path from 1 to 5. So the first observation is if we are trying to go via 2, so for example, we started the journey from 1 and we are going to 2 and is there a way that we can go back to 1 and come to 4, visit it and come back to 1 and then come to 2 and then go to its subtree? No, because we are using an excess edge here. So the first observation is if we are trying to go to a great node, which is this and if there are any great nodes in this subtree, it is optimal to traverse all these great nodes and come back to this node and come back to root and then go to other great nodes. So this is the first observation. So after this, let's take another idea. The given one asks us to find the shortest path from 1 to n. So what if we, so we are starting from root. So we will try to find out the shortest path from 1 to 1 by traversing all the great nodes. The question asks us to find from 1 by reaching all the nodes till n and the simplest one variation of this is we are starting from 1 and we are also ending from 1 but we have to traverse all the great nodes in between. So let's try to do this first. So for this graph, let's take a path with which is starting from 1 and indicate 1 and should cover all the great nodes. The great nodes are colored in yellow. So the great nodes are 4, 6 and 3. So we are traversing these three and it is starting from 1 and it is ending at 1. So this is one of our possible answers. Of our assumption, we are starting from 1 and ending at 1. So if we carefully observe this path, we can observe that 1 to 4 is coming twice. Because we are coming to 4 and going back to 1. Similarly, 4 to 5 is twice. And similarly, 5 to 6 is also twice. And similarly, 1 to 2. And similarly, 2 to 3. 2 to 3 and 3 to 2. So, if we are trying to get an idea from this, it is easy to understand that we are starting from 1 and we are wishing some edges and finally we are reaching 1 and the each edge we are traversing, we are double traversing it because we are going to it and coming from back. So, 1 to 4 is traversed twice, 4 to 5, 5 to 6, 1 to 2 and 2 to 3. These 5 are required to start from 1 and to reach all the great nodes and to reach 1. So let's see this and understand more. So 1 to 4. So this is the first that is counting twice. And next one is 4 to 5. And this one. And then 5 to 6. And this one. Observe that there is no 6 and 7. No 6, 8. No 6, 9. And the next one which is twice is 1, 2. And the next one which is twice is 2, 3. So why some edges are included and why some other not? If we observe more carefully we are starting from 1 and we are trying to traverse only the great nodes because we want to minimize the distance possibly traveled and finally we have to reach 1. So we are starting from 1 and we have to check here that we can traverse this node only if there are some great nodes in this subtree rooted at 4. Why? Else it is a waste of distance traversing this. For example if the node is 1 and there are no great nodes in the tree and we have to find the distance from 1 to 1 as per assumption. So there are no great nodes. So the answer will be directly 0. Right? Because there are no great nodes and the condition that all great nodes should be travelled is null here. So staying at the 1 is our answer. So answer is 0. So we have to traverse the node only if there are some great nodes in this subtree so that we can go through those and come back to this. So here initially we are at 1 and we are trying to go to this. Is there a need to go to this? Yes, because we have some great nodes in this subtree. So yes, we are traversing this node and as we have discussed, the every 
edge we are traveling is twice considered so answer plus plus twice and now we are coming to this so we have reached four and now we are now we are finding that is there a need to go to five or not is there a need to go to five yes because we have six in this sub tree which is a great node and we must travel it so we have to go to five also because we have a great node in sub tree and even this is counted twice because as you have seen and coming to five and let's come to 10 here for more clarity so we are at five and we are checking whether should we go to 10 or not there is no need to go to 10 because there is no great node in sub tree so it is uses distance to travel to 10 so leave a 10 aside so there is no need here that we are counting twice as we have seen here so let's come to 6 so should we come to 6 yes because we have great node in its sub tree so we are travel in through this edge so we have to include this edge as well which is 5 to 6 and then we have we came to 6 and we are checking whether we can come to 7 or not no because there are no sub no great nodes in its sub tree which are great so similarly similarly and then so starting from 1 we are trying to go to the edges which have at least one great node in its sub tree so we have completed 1 4 4 5 5 6 5. so we have completed this whole path then let's come to other let's come to this one so is there a need to go to 2 yes because we have three attached to it so yes go to this so we have to include this edge so the answer is included so 1 to 2 is included yes so we came to 2 so and now we are trying to go to 11 or not is there a need to go no because there is no sub tree with a great node so similarly we are trying to check for 3 yes there is a great node so reach this and finally we have to include this edge so it is included so with this idea we are able to find it because we are starting from one and we are going through each it child each it child node and we are finding this to reach or not then this child and this child and this child and so on. so after completing this one after completing 1 to 7 we are going to 1 to so if there are many other paths we can just do by a loop and we are going to check this whether there are any attached great nodes in the subtree if yes then go else just leave and go to the other one i hope you get it let's see the code for this so initially i am taking the number of nodes and resizing the count to n so we understood that we want to get whether there are any great nodes in its subtree in o of 1 so how can we do this we can do by dfs how we can start we can do by dfs let's see how how can we achieve it so initially we are at 1 and we are starting the uh, loop from its children so we are at here and we are finding this so when there is a possibility of existing a great node in subtree when at least when its children return that there are some great nodes in it or it should be a great node only then it has great nodes so initially we are at here so it is a great node itself so 1 plus and we have to return the sum of all great nodes in all of its children subtrees so we can achieve this by dfs so initially it is 1 so we have to return what we have to return the number of great great nodes in this so for this we have to count great nodes in all so we are coming to its first child 4 and we are asking whether it is a great node yes so it is a great node and 1 plus and what is the count of sub node great nodes in this sub tree plus node 5 plus any of its other child we have only child of 4 is 5 so it is just enough to traverse so by dfs we can find the number of great nodes in sub tree so we will ask one what is your answer it will ask 4 it will ask 5 it will ask 6 it will finally ask 7 the 7 has no other child nor it is a great node so it will return 0 and similarly 8 will return 0 and 9 will return 0 the sum of all great nodes is 0 but 6 is a great node so the number of great nodes in the whole subtree of 6 is 1 plus 0 so it will return 1 and similarly there is this is child and this returns 0 and the total number of great nodes is 1 this is not a great node so this will return 1 and so on so the dfs is int x is equal to 0 and is now is equal to 0 is now represents that the present node is a great node or not so how can we check it we can store the initial great nodes in a set because here we want to find whether a node is a great or not in of less than o of n so by set we can find in of log n so we can store initially or in set and now 
to check whether it is a great node or not so if we are finding the element in z the present one is a great node so we are incrementing is now and similarly we are traversing all the children and we are traversing it if it is not the parent and we have to add the total number of great nodes in each child so express is equal to dfs0 it of node 0 what this returns it returns the number of great nodes in the subtree rooted at id so after adding all these we can return these two nodes saying that these are the total number of great nodes in your subtree so dfs of 0 is that the number of subtrees the number of great nodes in all subtrees so this is our first problem we have solved how to find the shortest path from 1 to 1 by traversing all the nodes at least once and at the first glance it looks like we can also add the distance of 1 to 3 which are great nodes 1 to 4 and 1 to 6 so 1 to 2 we are traversing once 1 to 4 once and 1 to 6 once and we can get an idea that we can multiply by 2 so that we can reach 1 to 1 by reaching all the nodes but this is wrong here because then extra edges are wasted because if we check this and this there are some extra nodes in this so this is not correct and we have to check another way which we have done in the past and now coming to the main problem we found the answer for 1 to 1 by wishing all the nodes and let this answer be xx and now we want to find the answer for 1 ending at n so let's take an other easy idea that we get which is false finally so we found the answer 1 to 1 and we have to find for 1 to n so we can think that we found this as xx and we can add the shortest path of 1 to n to the answer so we can get the final answer but this is wrong so let's take a very small example initially we have to find 1 to 1 which is 2 here so 1 to 2 and 2 to 1 so it is 2 and what is the shortest path of 1 to 3 here it is this so it is 2 so the whole answer is 4 but what is our answer it is 1 to 3 1 to 3 and uselessly we are going back and coming to 1 again so this is wrong approach we cannot directly add the shortest path of 1 to n because many other edges are wasted so how to think of this is the optimal way now 1 to 1 answer is xx and we have to start from 1 and we have to visit the same set of nodes which are great nodes and we have to finally reach n so if we try to look at this closer obviously we are traversing some great nodes and there will be a last node in those great nodes so let's assume that that is k so we are traversing these are all the other sub all the other great nodes and this is some great node which we are visiting last and we are finally going to 1 so let's assume that the distance from 1 to k is y and the distance of k to 1 is shortest path why it is shortest path here and why it is not shortest path here it is a shortest path here why because there are no other conditions that we have to go to some other edges some other we are at node 1 we are at node k and we have satisfied the condition that we have reached all great nodes why because these are the other great node and this is the last great node so there is no other objection or no other rule that we have to traverse only some set of nodes so we can directly go to shortest path of k to 1 so here it is the shortest path of k to 1 but here it is not i hope you understand this and the sum of y and sp is xx because we got that this is xx but we have to set we have to traverse the same set so we have traversed from 1 and we have reached all the nodes and finally the road is k but now instead of n we have to go to n right so now what will be the this distance this will be y plus sp of this so the answer is y plus sp of this so what is y it is xx minus sp so xx minus sp of 1 to k which is this and we have to add this which is k to n so the final idea is we can find the total distance of 1 to 1 by reaching all the nodes and by assuming that k is the last node we can just try to do some mathematics here if we are trying to go to 1 the total sum is xx so what if we are trying to go to n so it will be xx minus 1 to k plus k to n but the again next question is how to find these both how to find these both shortest paths we cannot do bfs or some other dice trust for all the nodes so we can store a vector <coughs> distance 1 with the shortest path of 1 to all nodes and similarly we can maintain another vector with with n and the shortest distance of all <coughs> so by doing 2 bfs we can show shortest path of all and we can get 
the shortest path of these both in often and we already got this in often so we are able to get the answer in often by traversing all the nodes k and we are assuming that the present node is last node that we are visiting which is a great node and we are doing this operation which is often let's check the code <coughs> so the bfs the distance zero vector is the distance the shortest distance from zero to it, the node and we are using a queue pushing zero and making it visited in, in uh, initially the level is zero i hope you know bfs so based on the similar bfs idea we can traverse the queue until it is empty we can increment the level and we can traverse all the nodes in the present level in the queue so we are popping it and traversing through its children and if it is not visited if it is not visited the distance is level and we are pushing the into queue and we are making it visited so by doing this and returning distance of zero we are able to find the shortest distance of zero to all the routes so similarly we also want the shortest distance from k to n which is n minus 1 in zero based indexing so similarly we can find we can do a very similar bfs to find it we are initially pushing n minus 1 and the exact bfs as above so after getting this both we are here we are getting the distances of both and now we are trying to do this one so what is this we are trying to find xx here so how can we find we as we have discussed initially the dfs 0 is returning the count of node where count of i represents the number of great nodes in its subtree so how can we find xx we discussed that we are starting from 1 we are starting from 1 and we go to its children and we check whether there are any subtree in the grid nodes yes then go else then break so the same idea is used here so traversing the all children of the present node and if it is not parent and there are some grid nodes in the subtree and we, we will go to that node only if count of i is greater than or equal to 1 so if it is not parent and there must be some grid nodes in its subtree and yes then it will enter the loop and we are traversing this edge and as we have discussed the every edge traverse is counted twice so we are incrementing it by 2 and finally going to the next children so after completion we can get xx from this so we completed most of the part we found how to find xx we found this and we found this as well so the only thing left is choices of k so obviously k is a great node so we traverse all the great nodes and find which is traversed last assuming that this is last and find this in often so we are traversing to the set and we are minimizing with xx minus distance of 0 plus distance of n which is exactly this i hope you understand this drop a like if you have any doubts post in the comments below see you in the next one